Hi there, Aaron Dunn here from the SMSF Academy and we have recently released a new document here that will allow you to add or remove a reversionary beneficiary from an existing superannuation income stream. Now with the changes coming about from the 1st of July 2017 in respect to the death of a member there are some important decisions that need to be made as to whether you may wish to add a reversionary or remove a reversionary beneficiary from an existing income stream. Now we have had for some time uh, some debate and discussion around whether there is an ability to change the terms and conditions of the income stream midstream. That is, are we required to commute and cease that pension and then start a new pension having regard to adding or removing a reversionary or can we change the conditions of that arrangement midstream. And what we have now been able to do is allow for such a change by adding or removing the beneficiary uh, as a result of making some amendments to the SMSF deed. And you can see here in Rule 25.9 what we have the ability to do includes whilst we have a member in receipt of an income stream they can request to the trustee to vary the terms and conditions of that pension relating to the income stream at any time after the commencement by adding or removing a reversionary to that subject pension. So what we've now put in place here is the ability for you to go through and undertake if you've used the documentation, A, the deed and the documentation that we've created around the pension commencement, allow you to generate an order that will enable for A, the member request to either add or remove that beneficiary, some trustee minutes around the decision, and then a notification of the changes to the income stream. And this is really important, not only in respect to the changes going forward, but is also important in circumstances where individuals may have some grandfathering in place around pre-1 January 2015 income streams. So let's just go in now and have a look at how we create this document and what it means. So the first thing we're going to have to do here is, is of course add in all of the necessary information around the fund and the trustee and member info. So we'll have here our Smith SMSF and we'll put our address in uh, of the fund and obviously that will pre-fill and, and validate that and carry across right throughout this order form. And then from here we're putting in the details of the type of trustee that the fund has. We'll have two individuals here, our address of the meeting, we've got John and Jane Smith here. And again, if we're using our integrations with class or uh, Simple Fund 360, all of this information will automatically populate through. So we choose our chairman of the meeting, our meeting date, and then we're putting in the name of the member being paid that account-based pension. So we'll say it's John, we've got his address here, and we simply will move through and now look at the details around the reversionary. So whether we're looking, um, or in this instance, we're looking at the initial terms and conditions that established the pension. So we'll say it was the 1st of uh, July 2015. We need to make a decision as to whether we're adding a person and who that person is, or we're removing. Now importantly, if we're removing a reversion, we, we may be removing them as a result of the death of the member. So we can use this where we had, say, John and Jane and Jane passed away where we don't any, uh, no longer have a reversionary um, whilst the pension wouldn't be allowed to continue anyway by law we can tidy up the um, the rules around the fund to around the pension I should say within the fund to ensure that the pension will be able to be paid for that remain that surviving spouse's period of time so in this instance we'll say here that we're adding a beneficiary so if we put add We'll put in here that we're adding Jane Smith because it was non-reversionary when it was set up. We put in here the person that qualifies as a tax dependent and the effective date that we want to have this take effect. And then we need to put in here the specific rule or clause that allows for that to occur. And again, we're going back over here, 25.9, and we can put in here, is this member required to notify Centrelink of the change? Because importantly, if it's a pre-existing income stream, it will impact on the deductible amount where that pension was established prior to 
the 1st of January 2015. So we'll say there's no Centrelink problems here. Then finally, we will review and submit um, that information around the edition that we've got here. This will be available as part of your membership for our silver and gold members. For our uh, bronze and free members, you will need to obviously put in your credit card information here to enable payment for the preparation of this document. So I'll hit submit now, and what we'll do is I'll just hit pause for a moment whilst this document can generate, and then we'll go through and show you the documentation that we prepare around the addition, in this instance, of Jane Smith as a reversionary beneficiary. Okay, so we've now got our ordered document, and if I just bring this across here, we can now see that we've got our request to add a reversionary beneficiary to an account-based pension here. So we note the term when it initially um, was commenced within the fund. Uh, at that stage, there was no reversionary nominated to that, and we're now adding Jane. We have the specific information inside the minutes here around the governing rules that allow for that to occur. Um, we note that the member, um, we can update the terms and conditions that are to become a special rule of the fund and we to accept and update the special rules of the account-based pension by adding Jane as a reversionary beneficiary. So notify the member of those changes and update the records within any um, record keeping that is done inside the SMSF administration system, whatever the case may be, around the fact that the pension will revert to Jane in the event of the member's death. And then we have here, finally, the trustee notification back, acknowledging the request and thereby updating the information to say that it will now automatically continue in the event of um, John's death across to Jane. So there you have it, our documentation now to either add or remove a reversionary beneficiary from an existing income stream. If you do have any other questions in respect to this paperwork, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to help. Thank you.